I will not accept anybody's negativity. I will not accept anybody trying to burst our bubble. I will not accept anybody being nothing less than excited because your Chicago Bears are 3 and 0. Justin Fields throws three touchdowns in the final preseason game. Ladies and gentlemen, the North belongs to Chicago. We are here on the Sports Cubicle. It is the marvelous one, Dev, the marvelous one, Dan Marver, Devin Single, Paul Shavari, and myself, Mike Mercado. We are excited because football is here. We are counting down the days so we have our full regular season extravaganza episode where we do all the great picks and we look dumb at the end of the season but until we get to that point until we get to september 11 for bears kickoff marvelous one they are super bowl preseason champions just uh-huh. looked pretty good last uh in this last preseason game against cleveland i i this has been my big thing this entire preseason they aren't making stupid mistakes they're getting the play out in time they're communicating well and they're playing professional football. Look, at it's very early, and we had high praise for Matt Nagy, but those wheels fell off about week 13 heading into that playoff series against the Eagles. So mm-hmm. I think right now, the, if you're looking for any type of optimism in what might be a 6-1 season, is that they're not going to embarrass you like they had in season past. Your thoughts after a 3-0 preseason, Marvelous One? <laughs> they're on their way. My, my thoughts are as follows. It was good to see... David Montgomery yeah. in the game, and that made a big difference. Uh, it was good to see that uh, I think that in this offense, there seems to be a little bit more of utilizing Justin Fields' skill set. Mm-hmm. You know, and, 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 and again, as long as the line can hold off the opposition long enough for him to make his decisions, he's not a split-second type of decision maker, it looks like to me. He, he, sometimes he'll need to roll out, and there's the threat of him running, which is his strength. So. Uh, I, I like what I saw. Again, it's a preseason, and they're playing the Cleveland Browns. The Cleveland Browns quarterback, as you may know yesterday, was Jacoby Brissett. <laughs> Yikes! And because there's no more Baker Mayfield, and there's no more Deshaun Watson. So I guess he's their guy. But, see, we were without. I mean, Roquan Smith did not play, even though he was there. He was, they, they advertised that he was playing, but he did not. Eddie Jackson... Uh, Jalen Johnson, uh, very progressive, productive players, and Jaquan Brisker, who got hurt in the Kansas City game, all weren't in on defense. So it was hard to see if the defense is solid. I mean, they gave 20 points to a a mediocre team, honestly. So, I mean, I think that it was a good sign to see the offense do well with most of the starters, and and the defense will will be fine. So I'm I'm optimistic. I'm still not going to give them better than – six, seven, or eight wins. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, I don't mm-hmm. think they're going to be above 500 this year, but we shall see. Hopefully I'm wrong. So the, 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 the champions of the preseason, whoop de doo which <laughs> means nothing. I do not like the fact that it's like t- two weeks off now. It's very it, weird. It's right. very weird. You're, let's, let's talk about that for just a second. We'll get back to the Bears, but the sure. fact that there's almost, what, 11, 12 days in between preseason game three and then the regular season starting, there it is – it is very interesting, and it was, it was, that's why it was nice to see the starters play as long as they did and be effective as they did because there's going to be so much time in between that and the game against San Francisco. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is that in the old setup where they had the four games, the only teams that were affected were the opening Thursday night games. They right. probably had them play on Thursday in the week before, which is fine. They still have a week. I mean, I don't think anybody had less than a week in the old setup. In fact, I think they – didn't have anybody playing the final Sunday. I think it was always Saturday was the last preseason game when there was a fourth week. So now the cutdowns are coming, you know, um, on Tuesday, I believe. They have to get down to, what is it, 53 or something players? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's going to be the big news in the bye. In the, so in this sort of bye week we've got here for everybody. So um, we'll see what it is. Some people earned a job they might not have had, and there are other guys that are that are on the, uh, uh, pins and needles. So. That will be uh, the big news this week is the who stays and who goes. Here are people that I'm looking out for. And again, we're going to go in our deep dive in just a couple episodes because it's we are all excited about the Rams and Bills kicking off this season. And then the Bears going up against San Francisco, the nightmarish, the team that just lives deep in our soul, the San Francisco 49ers. Mm-hmm. But I'm, I'm looking at Cole Komet. 
I'm looking at Tevin Jenkins. I'm looking what they do at left tackle. I'm seeing who they think about picking up in the waiver wire because we do know that they're going to pick up people that got dropped from other NFL teams, which in its own is very interesting to see those guys beat out other guys that have currently been here throughout the entire camp. It all comes down to Justin Fields. I think Justin Fields has already a great relationship of chemistry with his tight ends, with Darnell Mooney. It's gonna If you could get some guys on the wide receiver squad to help him, and that's what it looks like the next draft is going to be about, is securing more offensive line and getting him some weapons. We have to see how Khalil Herbert bounces back from an injury. David Montgomery is fighting for a contract. Not just Roquan Smith. David Montgomery is on that. It's going to be interesting. Robert Quinn, can he continue to do what he does? How much will it affect having Roquan also being on the outside in, in a will linebacker position? I think for the most part, there have been so many ups and downs this offseason from Larry Okunjobi to arrest to guys not being able to play to at this point now the Tevin Jenkins stuff. You had the Roquan Smith stuff. But after all that, I think Ryan Pulse and Matt Eberflus have done a pretty good job going through choppy water. I don't know if these are the guys that find somehow to fix that travesty that is the McCaskey ownership. I don't know if they can do it. I don't know if they could get through Ted Phillips or George. I don't know. But <laughs> in a very tumultuous offseason, preseason, they have found a way to get to week one. They have found a way to do it. And all, all being all, none of us are sitting here being like, oh, they're going to suck. They're not going to win a lot of games. But I don't know if they're going to suck. I don't know <laughs> if they're going to be bad. I think they're just going to lose a lot of games. And I think they're going to lose a lot of games by a field goal, by points. So I don't think it's going to be a lot of blowouts. And I think they're going to break a lot of people's hearts during the season because they're going to take somebody out of the playoff race. They're going to beat a team they're not supposed to beat. And it's going to put you in an interesting position. If Cole Komet develops, if Justin Fields develops, and if your defense is able to play up because of the coach that you brought in, there's no reason why you can not be spoiler to Minnesota, that you can't try to take a game from Green Bay. You may not, but you should be in it. I should be able to, I, not only myself, marvelous, Devin, Paul, all of Chicago, anybody who's a Bears team, anybody who just made this team a $5.4 worth billion dollar team when they build a new stadium. Mm -hmm. They just need to be entertaining enough. And I think this preseason, we've seen that. But Marvelous, now that we're getting close to this extravaganza episode, we've had a chance to dissect it. Has there been anything that has surprised you, either negatively or positively, of this Bears team that you've seen? Maybe this coaching step, maybe this front office. Is there anything that has really over the last few weeks, over this training camp, this preseason, really been something that's got you excited or at least the prospect of something good to happen for this organization? I, I try not to get too excited about the preseason, but it was, by comparison, exciting to see the progress, in a way, of fields in game three over two and one. And uh, I, our next opponent, the 49ers, beat a preseason game, was shut out this week by Houston, who's not – a great team either. So maybe that's optimistic too. <laughs> Week two, you talk about Green Bay, you jump right into it on a Sunday night game. That will be a real barometer of how they're doing. But I am more enthused about seeing the first two games of the regular season than I was the last three of the preseason. We'll see how Justin Fields does against San Francisco and then against Green Bay. Mm. And then we can really make some assessments as to whether this is going to be a remarkable season or a season of, as we're expecting where it's not a playoff contender. It's going to be fun covering it this entire season because there's going to be ups and downs. There's going to be frustrating games. There's going to be games that are super exciting and that we're going to enjoy the outcome of them. But it's all about the development. And that's what's going to be fascinating to see is how we grade this now compared to the Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace era. We want to know your thoughts. The Bears are your preseason Super Bowl champions at 3 <laughs> No, We're on Twitter at Sports Cubicle TV. It's the marvelous one, Dan Marvel. It's Devin Tingle. It's Paul Shavari. I'm Mike Ricardo. <laughs>